So I actually left a, a poll on my community tab. So make sure you're always hanging around there. So I'm trying to interact with uh, everyone there. Uh, with a poll saying what we wanted to see. A spicy Eternus list or Gola. And you voted for a spicy Eternus list. And let me tell you, this is spicy. Let's get to it. And so, Eternus V Max Martial Arts Dojo. Now, on face value, you're thinking, Shay, what on earth is going on? Eternus is not a fighting type. Why are we winning fighting injuries? Why are we winning a stage and that benefits fighting types? Well, Martial Arts Dojo doesn't require you to be a fighting type. Martial Arts Dojo only needs you to be a non Ultra Beast Pokemon with a basic fight, um, fighting energy attached. And that's something we can satisfy in Eternus. Now, this is going to make our Dread End go from 270 all the way up to 310. And in combination with the many Zigzagoo Scoop up nets we have, we can very, very easily one shot Eternus V Max in the mirror and Sentinel Scorch in that are like as good as dead. <laughs> so let's have a look at this pretty mad version. So we're starting off with three Eternus V Max. Our V Max Pokemon 340 HP Scary Geezer with an ability uh, Eternal Zone, I think it's been uh, translated to. Um, while this Pokemon's in play, you can have up to eight Dark type Pokemon on your bench, but you can only have Dark types. This is really cool on face value. That means we can go nuts with stuff like Crobat, uh, Hooper, um, you know, other Eternus Vs, for example. Uh, and it works really well in combination with its attack, Dread End, which is 30 for each of your dark Pokemon in play. Now, it includes the active, so you can, like I said, you can times that by 9 and get a massive 270, which is one shot in um, like a Mewtwo tag team. Crazy. With one Zigzagoon, you can get um, ADP. And then with the dojo buff and all that shenanigans, you can start hitting big, big, big numbers. So you can already see the synergy of Eternus V Max. Uh, obviously, we're going to play four of the Eternus V, just because these are these are like the sort of best bench shooters we've got. Because you know they've got big, beefy 220 HP, only give up two prizes, and the first attack's kind of useful. Power XL for a colorless, we can use the fighting type for that one. You can attach a dark energy from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. A little bit of soft energy acceleration. A lot of decks will be uh, throwing in hammers to deal with Eternus. And Power XL helps you get around that. Dynamax Cannon, 4 for 120 if they're VMAX 220 more. 4 for 240 is not good. 4 for 120 is even worse. So we don't really, unless you're playing Revile version, you can't really get used to this attack. So um, Dynamax Cannon, pretty good in the game. Not so much in uh, TCG. At least for now. And we've got four Crobats. This is insane. Uh, when you bench this Pokemon, you can draw you can draw to have six cards in your hand. That's pretty nuts, right? Just being able to be like, right, uh, we don't even need a supporter, we can just whoop up to six. Again, these are really good bench sitters because you know we need uh, we need eight bench dark types, so Crobat's like perfect. You can see the synergy. Um, usable attack poison fang two for seven your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned. So and so. We only really use it for night asset though. We're gonna fill our hand up. This is gonna let us play loads of Marnies and be really disruptive in that regard because we can fall back on a Crobat, so we don't really dead draw ourselves. We've got four of these bad boys and a lot of Pokemon search to find them out as well. Night asset is pretty nuts. We then play four Galarian Zigzagoon. This is how we're gonna start making that 310 I told you about, start hitting 320 and you know up to 340. Now it doesn't sound too hard now, right? If you're hitting for 310 with your dread and max power all you got to do is find three goons is that right three goons yeah three goons um or a combination of uh, like uh, scoop up nets right so you can have one goon and uh what two nets or something in our ballpark all right and i tell you now with grow back dig and support a dig it's not too hard to do and this is a crazy concept right for when you can do 340 in a turn not have to discard energy it's pretty nuts. Galarian Zigzagoon, again, and, and like I said, you need one benched, one to uh, Oko, a, an ADP. And since we play for it, it's not going to be too hard to find them. Uh, I've really been liking Galarian Zigzagoon in combination with Scoop Omnet in these decks. Absolutely nuts. Then we're riding off the Pokemon, we played a nice two hoop with the Assault Gate. If this Pokemon started the turn on the bench and became active, this turn does 90. So a bit like uh, Team Up Zapdos. Um, just a really efficient attack, you know, if you do miss a carry with Dread End, it's really nice to finish him off with the Hooper, uh, leave a one prize in the active and potentially take three prizes with him. And this is a big beefy 120 HP basic dark type, can't go wrong really, so that's all the Pokemon. Let's get into the support, let me put these in order thinking about it, because we are got a slightly different supporter lineup than normal. So we got four Marnie, like I said, we can afford to play Marnie like 
every turn and because we've got crowbat to pull back on we shouldn't really dead draw ourselves too often really cool and if you're playing four mines in the game one of those mines will stick on your opponent and they won't have the optimal setup they want and that's where this deck can start getting nuts so you can just be like right you haven't got the setup you want bang there's 270 you know up to 310 and then like 340 with zigzagoon pings and like here's a four card hand deal with it like, oh okay we're in a bit of a spot above her here huh Marnie's are pretty good for that right now we actually played four bosses in this deck and the reason being we're not gonna have the dojo turn very often we have we know we're at plus 40 damage and we can do the one shot in the combination with the goons in our hand right so when that turn comes, I want to make sure I'm getting three prizes that turn, right? Because there's no guarantee you're going to get another one. So that's why I've gone super aggressive with the four bosses here for sure. Now you might think that's a bit of a flex spot and you can change it to something else. I'm not against it. I've just found with this deck, since we are super aggressive, we won't be taking these one shots as quick and early as possible. I want to make sure if we do have the opportunity to one shot, I don't want it wasted by going into like a two prizer, for example. Let's make sure we get into three prizes against like a Center Scorch or a Eternus Mirror. Let's make sure we're taking those prizes whilst we've got the opportunity. And then we can just afford to just chill and just do like dread m for like 270 after that i'm sure we can get three prizes back that way <laughs> and then we've got two professors research just to help out with the draw we've got so much crow but i don't really need many draw supporters so i think the, this support line is quite fair um, and it's quite neutral and you want to throw in some peers in here as well not against that i think for now though this build doesn't really warrant the peers if you're playing like a more obstagoon based engine uh, i think peers is a lot better but i think in all other circumstances research is good Right, it's gone to the search. We play three Great Ball. Just so we can have those explosive turns. It's all well and good, say we can do 340, but we still have to have you know, eight Dark Types on the bench, right? Um, in which case, we're going to need loads of uh, Ball Search. We've got three Great Ball for that. We've got three Pokecom so we can help reliably find our turn as VMAX because Pokecom finds us everything apart from the VMAX. Um, so Pokecoms are the most reliable way of finding the VMAX. You know, we do need to get the VMAX out first before we can start exploding the bench. So it is rather important. That's why we play three of those. And we still play four quick balls because, you know, it finds us a whole lot of stuff, right? Zigzagoon, Hooper, Crobat, Eternus V. Crobat, um, quick ball is insane, so that's why I've opted for this here. Now, you might like cut a great ball and go to a fourth communication. That's completely up to you. But for me, this search is what I find to be pretty good in Eternus decks. All right, next up, we have for the scoop up next, like I was saying. This is going to let us reuse our Zigzagoons. Which means you have what a potential eight damage counters, three damage counters to play with. That's a lot. That means we can do the reach onto um, one shot Eternus V Max twice in a game potentially, and that's what we need to do to win. So you can see the power, the inherent, the inherent power level is there. Scoop up net lets us do that. Okay, we then play two energy spinner because we do actually need to find the uh, fighting energies. Uh, and we can't play Viridian because we need Dojo to be in play, so Energy Spin is going to let us do that. Energy Spin is not a bad card, honestly, as well. If you go in second, that's got you so many energy that you really need for the rest of the game. Um, and yeah, so I think Energy Spin is always a fair enough card, isn't it? You never really hurt by playing Energy Spin, unless playing against Vicavolt, in all fairness. Okay. Then for our switching cards, we play one Air Balloon on Switch. Um, I think that's quite fair. Air Balloon is going to let you develop a pivot, and Switch is a nice card to have full stop. Uh, I'm not 100% sold on those, but. They're the ones I've settled on for now. So you have got high dark energy to act as switching cards also. Okay, then for our stage, we play one black market. I see no reason for not be playing this in a turn as VMAX decks. You know, if they are going to try and KO two VMAXs, which is a very good way to go. Um, if you can have black market pop for one of those, that throws that game plan completely out the window. So I'm a big fan of black market. But the start of the deck and the spice, there we go. Martial Arts Dojo times three. Um, if you're not behind on prizes, you attack to an extra 10. That's pretty cool. That means we can one-shot ADP without goons. Pretty nice. Uh, but if we're behind on prizes as well, we do an extra 40. And that's going to really help us. So if your opponent gets a big swing KO first, you can then respond KO. And most Eternus won't be able to one-shot your new Eternus. Combine it with a Marnie and say, right, bang. There you go. What are you going to do next? And you're in a good spot. So Dojo is pretty insane 
We then play two high darks. When they're attached to dark type Pokemon, they count as a float stone for all intents and purposes. This is great because the Turner's VMAX has a three retreat cost, chunky geezer, you know, and if we can just use them to like, we can start set and attack him with one and then just transition into the other one, force the bosses, you know, while we're mining them, just makes it a lot harder for them really. So high dark's pretty cool. You might want to maybe take out the air balloon for another high dark. I also like the air balloon doesn't take up your attachment for the turn. Okay, and then for energy, we play what four, six dark, a little bit on the low side, but we do have to fit in our fighting energies. Pretty cool though, good number. We got spinners to help find them out also, and then we've got three fighting energy. You could argue that being for two, but I like three just so we can always you know have it when we need it. So we don't want to be playing this whole dojo engine if we prize two of our fighting energies, and that can happen. So thank you very much for watching, guys. What do you think of my Eternal, uh, Eternus VMAX Martial Arts Dojo? It's actually a suggestion from someone in the comments. Now, I can't remember your exact name, but you know who you are if you're watching. Many thanks for the suggestion. You rocked it. This is a very cool list. I've played some games with it, and it's pretty nutty. So shout-outs to you. I'll try and put it on the screen if I remember. But thanks for watching, as always, guys. If you have the more Darkness of Blaze post-rotation format content, make sure you check the playlist out in the description where I've got loads of videos in there. And follow me on Twitter at HotChockPTCG. Well, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.